my name is Ariel Noy. I'm a Context Stream CTO and one of the founders. I'm going to show you about our SDN uh, uh, enabled virtual EPC gateway uh, at CPOC number 34. Uh, we do that with uh, a few partners, uh, uh, Telenos and Vodafone as the service providers, us Context Streams uh, as the SDN fabric, Mavinir as uh, the EPC component that's doing the control plane and uh, HP bringing up the NFV director and the hardware and Red Hat as a uh, OpenStax and I envision doing uh, the local breakouts uh, video optimization uh, that I will show you uh, later on. Now a few words about the concept of uh, what uh, this POC is all about. So before that, you had uh, an EPC component, EPC network, ENLB, S-Gateway, P-Gateway, communicating with the uh, MME and, S and PCRF. And what we are going to show over here is first virtualizing those components. But beyond that, it just beyond just virtualizing them, also separating them between EPC control and EPC data path. So the EPC control will be done by uh, Mavinir doing S gateway and P gateway only control and the EPC data path through the, our SDN fabric will be translated to OpenFlow switches that are doing the EPC data path during the actual user plane handling all the GTP. So these combinations of a control of the EPC S5, S11 being handled by Mavinir. I'm going to show you the separation between the EPC control and the EPC data path. Okay? The EPC control done by Mavinir, our partners, that will do the S gateway and the P gateway control plane, S5, S11, and protocols. And one day, once they learn about attach, detach, handovers, they will communicate with our SDN fabrics through the broker that will get those commands and will use our SDN fabric through the mapping service that I will explain in a second and push it to the uh, federated distributed SDN control that will push it to open flow switches that the open flow switches will be handling all the GTP, uh, all the uh, user plane of the S gateway and the P gateway. Now, the fact that it's moved to an open flow base, so it's much faster uh, and much easier uh, data path component, then and much cheaper, they can be in multiple places. So not necessarily on the central point on the main anchoring point like it was before, but it can be also local breakout next to the edge, either right after the inode B or some aggregation point. So we will show you a few applications that we can do based on the fact that we have that separation and multiple location of the anchoring point. A few words about our distributed uh, SDN fabric. What we take is uh, a network multiple locations, whether that's a rack or data center, and we put on that in every location a context net node, we call it, which combine a constant net switch, and on top of that, an SDN controller, our, a context net control, which is based on open daylight. We connected those to all kinds of VNF instance, and we use an overlay networks to create a overlay path between different sites. To distribute and federate the controller, we use the mapping service that is, you can look at it as a distributed database, DHT based, uh, multiple copies that enables you to be available everywhere. And it's triple like that becoming a context net node and you can have multiple context net nodes in multiple locations and could they communicate through the mapping service where we communicate to the mapping service based on Lisp. 
On top of that, you can connect uh, through the context net broker, management, or context view, connect to the mapping service, so you get a global view and a global information into the SDN layer. Now, I'm going to show you uh, the demonstration that we have. We have the main anchoring point over here, the S gateway and P gateway control. We have over here the S gateway and a P gateway control done by Mavenir. Goes to the MME and push it to the mapping service for the SD, to the broker controller configuring the uh, open flow switches that is doing the data path and that's in the central side. In addition, we push it in the edge. Now, what we do, example of application for, that we're doing with uh, our partner IM Vision is the fact that content, for example, smooth streaming, coming from the internet, gets to uh, the clients, but instead of having multiple subscribers when they watch the same movie, they can get it only from the proxy and instead of getting everyone in from the internet. So what we created over here in this demonstration is first the ability of a captive portal and a user portal that the user can select his own service. So he can turn on and off all kinds of GI LAN services. That's what we demonstrate in our GI LAN uh, uh, demo. But in addition, he can select whether he can get from a local edge content uh, uh, information, addition, additional services, which are closest to the uh, subscriber. And he also can see the usage, how much he downloads from the center, how much he downloads from uh, the local. So the fact that we connected it to analytics data that we have and to the open flow switch information that we have, we can show exactly how much you download from which type of content and also that can be served to all kinds of 800 APNs that you want or things that you want to charge different. And the subscriber can also see what exactly that he served and all the data that he, want, he served to. So there are all kinds of uses for that. For example, I get back to this IAM Vision example. Okay, I have these two tablets that at the moment each one of them serve a different site. So I will take this, uh, this one and change it to the same channel as, as the other one. So I hit, click the BBC News and now what's happened is that these guys switch to this channel. So he's still been surfing from the main site. You can see the two graphs over there. The upper graph is from the center, and the bottom graph is from the edge content. So at the beginning, he started to surf from the center, okay? But at some point, when we get the, uh, the, the request from uh, the subscriber to the internet, get the response, what our VNF is doing is sending it to iVision asking whether you can optimize this video. When I Envision sees that with the information that we tell them, like, like these subscribers are on the same inode bees, so okay, he says, now I have a motivation to optimize it. Redirect the traffic to the local proxy, and we send the answer to the subscriber that with a redirect to the local proxy. So now the subscribers jump to the local proxy and the proxy download the video from the, uh, from the internet. So you can see the top graph was coming from the center and the bottom graph right now is picking up the, the traffic and the traffic is coming from the local uh, breakout instead from the center. So on the, uh, on the back hole, you have only one get for two subscribers.